All right, guys, the Iceman here in the Jeffrey Rose YouTube channel. Um, this video here is going to correlate a little bit with Gemini 888's video about his top five um, greatest superstars as far as performance goes. And I'm going with a different category. Mine is the top five guys in the world of professional wrestling that held the world belt that shouldn't have had the belt in my eyes. Um, and I don't think that too many people would disagree with the names I have here. Uh, they may disagree with the order that I put them in. Um, but you know, my number five, uh, superstar or person in the world of professional wrestling that held the world title, uh, that I don't think really was deserving of it, uh, for me was Scott Steiner when uh, he defeated Booker T in November of 2000. Now, granted, the WCW was really on its last leg. Uh, they lost a lot of superstars, and they had to come up with some way to, uh, you know, keep the viewers going. But the year 2000 was a horrible year for WCW. And to me, you know... I always liked Scott Steiner when he teamed up with his brother Rick, the Steiner brothers, but I don't think Scott Steiner at all ever deserved to become WCW champion. And uh, so anyway, he is my number five pick. My number four pick, this was back in December 1983 when the Iron Sheik wrestled Bob Backlund. And this was back when Vince McMahon wanted to change Bob Backlund. He chose not to change. Uh, he wanted B Backlund to turn heel, and Backlund would not do it because of all the following he had from the younger kids, and he didn't want to disappoint them by turning heel. So... Uh, they wanted Backlund to lose to Hulk Hogan, and Backlund refused to do so. So they threw in the Iron Sheik. Uh, the Iron Sheik had Backlund in the camel clutch hold. Backlund would not give up. So his manager, Arnold Skolan, eventually threw in the towel, and that ended Bob Backlund's title reign. Uh, in the WWF back then. And uh, for me, uh, this was just a transitional win for the Iron Sheik because he wasn't going to have the belt for very long, and he didn't. He lost it a month later in the beginning of January to Hulk Hogan, and thus there started Hulkamania. So my number four pick was the Iron Sheik. He was never deserving of the, the championship, but again, the WWF back then had to find a way to, you know, have back on lose and for Hulk Hogan to get the belt and to start, which what we all now know was Hulkamania and then WrestleMania in there. So, uh, so he was my number four pick. Uh, my number three pick, this is pretty, pretty much an obvious one. Uh, was when uh, Vince McMahon beat Triple H in September of 99 for the uh, the World Heavyweight Belt, the WWF Heavyweight title. And uh, you're a promoter. Uh, I know you wanted to get yourself involved in your wrestling business, but to have such an ego to go in there and then defeats the likes of Triple H, who was just really starting off his championship runs. And, uh, yeah, I just thought that was a fiasco as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Vince also won the ECW title as well at one point. But for him to win the uh, WWF championship belt, to me, was just totally ridiculous. Um, never should have been been involved in it whatsoever. Uh, but again, he's Vince McMahon and he can do what he wants. So, 
but that was my number three pick. My number two pick, this is a pretty easy one. In, I believe it was, eight, no, it was April 2000, when David Arquette went up against Eric Bischoff and Jeff Jarrett and became WCW's World Heavyweight Champion. Again, this was in 2000 where WCW was going downhill and they were trying to come up with some ideas. Uh, I just thought it was totally asinine for Arquette to win. I know he was being helped out by Diamond Dallas Page, uh, but for a, a TV actor to come in and win the WCW World Heavyweight title with all the other superstars, maybe there weren't a lot of great ones left on that roster, but for him to become the WCW champion was just ludicrous. Uh, it just took away, it tarnished the WCW uh, World title, and it just never, ever, ever should have happened. So that was my number two pick. And my number one pick was, you know, sort of similar. Uh, also in 2000, Vince Russo defeating Booker T for the World Heavyweight Championship belt. This is back when Russo was uh, involved in doing a lot of running of the WCW. And uh, it was always his dream to become a world champion. And... Uh, but and it, it just took a lot away from Booker T. I mean, what, how did it make Booker T look for Vince Russo to defeat him? Uh, it just made WCW look even more ridiculous. I mean, the year 2000 was a very, very bad year for WCW. With Arquette and Vince Russo both holding the belts within the same year. It just went to show you how badly WCW was at that time and uh you know it's a sad thing because uh they they did so well prior to that they they gave the wwe wwf a run for their money and things just went downhill ted turner wanted out and eric bischoff just you know he he just couldn't do it and it went on to the point where WCW just was like really horrible but yeah so there you have it my number one uh, worst world heavyweight champion was Vince Russo my number two was David Arquette number three being WWE's own owner Vince McMahon number four the Iron Sheik a transitional champion only and number five, Scott Steiner. A number five pick could have been a number of guys, but, you know, after I looked them over and stuff, you know, I had JBL involved in that. I had even Bill Goldberg involved with that. Um, but for me, Scott Steiner probably was the least deserving of holding the uh, World Heavyweight Belt, so... There's my video. Those are my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think. I mean, I'm sure everybody else has other ideas. Uh, but, you know, with Vince McMahon and Arquette and Vince Russo, uh, you can't go wrong picking these guys. I mean, guys that had no business even holding the belt whatsoever. So, peace out, everybody. Have a great Saturday night. This is the Iceman. We'll see you next time.